of Light Center for Spiritual Living here in beautiful, sunny Jamaica. Let us begin as we begin all things with an affirmative prayer. Please join me. We give thanks. We give thanks in this moment for this moment, for the joy of this moment, the peace of this moment, the love of this moment, and know that without a doubt, God is all of this moment. So we give thanks for being here present to experience God in this moment, in this very special place. So I know that my word now activates the law that expresses joy, peace, love, and light through each one of us so that this morning's service is an experience that lifts us, lifts us above, lifts us beyond any idea of otherness. For this I truly give thanks. And I release my word now into that law, that perfect law that has already made joy and peace and love and light present in our experience now. Thank you, God, that this is already so. And so, so it, it is. is. Our inspirational reading this morning comes from the Creative Thought magazine from January the 23rd, no, <laughs> from a few years back. The epigraph reads, every day, every moment, every second, there is a choice. If it were not so, we would not be individuals. That's from Dr. Ernest Holmes from The Science of Mind. The title, I Choose My Happiness. I recognize the one universal divine intelligence, the radiant power of one life, the expanding mind of God. The wholeness and allness of spirit expresses itself in and all throughout all of creation. I am unified with this intelligence. My life is perfect, whole, and complete in the field of this divine one life. It lives through me and as me. Knowing my mind and heart are connected to the infinite, I claim my highest and best good. I have the power to choose, and I choose happiness. I now experience happiness in every moment. My life is filled with everything that brings me joy and satisfaction. I share love and laughter with wonderful close friends. I thrive in a loving relationship with a partner who is perfect for me. Fulfilling work brings me great joy and I am richly compensated. I am uplifted and I uplift others. I am blessed with radiant good health and a path of limitless happiness unfolds before me. With thanksgiving for the unwavering law of mind that always says yes, I release my word to that law and simply let it be. And so it is. Amen. And that's from Dale Janda, a religious science practitioner from Palm Desert, California. Now we'll have our praise song, which is in your program and also on your screen. And this is Life is for Living. Life 
for living now. We'll now do the prayer of our center, so remain standing. And this is on your screen and in your program. The prayer of our center. The Temple of Light Center, center for, for Spiritual, spiritual living, living is a sacred field embodying our spiritual, spiritual community. community from which the Christ peace, love, love and joy emanate, to touch, to heal, to bless, to prosper, and to liberate anyone who comes into contact with it in any way. The light of the Christ illumines us, our center, and our environment. Our spiritual community is filled with and surrounded by the presence of God and is, and is growing, growing from, from strength, strength to strength. The, the power of God expands our consciousness of truth, guiding us ceaselessly along the paths of wisdom, spiritual growth, unfoldment, and attainment. We are blessed, and to God be the honor and the glory forever. And so, and so it, is. it is. And now we'll have the lighting of the youth candle. And this candle we light <clears throat> on behalf of the children of the world. So let us say the blessing of the children, which is found on page two. We love, we love you. you. We, we appreciate, appreciate you. you. We, we salute, salute the, the Christ, Christ in you. you. And we see, see you as shining lights onto, onto your, world. your world. God, God is blessing, blessing you now. now. And, and so, so it is. is. And now it's time for our mission song. The temple of light, the temple of light, the temple of light. We are a people with a vision, one with spirit with all a mission. To touch, to heal, to bless, to prosper, to love and liberate anyone who comes into contact with us any time, night or day. The temple of light, the temple of light, the temple of light. We are a people with a vision, one with spirit on a mission to touch, to heal, to bless, to prosper, to love and liberate anyone who comes into contact with us any time, night or day. That always gets us stirred up. <laughs> and now it's time for the announcements. Our announcements are for today, Sunday, January the 23rd. Imagine January soon done already. <laughs> Our floral arrangements this morning, they are beautiful, don't you agree? They were created by Mrs. Judith Deer. Thank you, Judith. And
And now I'd really like to put a special welcome for any first time visitors who are worshiping with us today. I don't see any in the sanctuary, but if there are any of you online, it would be great if you could identify yourselves so that we may welcome you online. We welcome you to our hearts and to our beautiful Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living in beautiful Jamaica. I wish you could be here. <laughs> we trust you will come again and again to share your consciousness with us. Welcome. We continue to live stream every Sunday at 9 a.m. and on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. The recording is also available later on YouTube. Today, following our service, discovery session will happen. However, today and until further notice, it will be exclusively on Facebook. So you may join Reverend John Scott at 1030 today. The topic will be, there is a song in my heart. And you're invited to join Reverend John on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 6 a.m. for a refreshing and insightful early morning start to your day. If you haven't yet tried it, it's just a little 10 minute pick you up that starts your day off right. Our spiritual enrichment healing service is on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. on Facebook and Zoom platforms. This week, our presenter is practitioner Sandra Cooper. The link is sent out from our mailing list. So you know if you're not yet on our mailing list, you need to get yourself on the mailing list so you can get all the information. On Thursdays at 6 p.m., an hour of communion with spirit, which we have titled, well, Reverend Sonia has titled, Prayer Power, and has been going on for some 20 years now. This is an hour of communion with spirit. It's hosted by Reverend Sonia Davidson. The link is sent out on Thursday mornings, again, from our mailing list. Mrs. Sonita Morin Boros, a temple member, is inviting the temple family to an open day at Afia, which is her yoga studio, on January the 30th. So please check the flyer on the notice board for details. And members who are registered with the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living are reminded that our membership fees of $6,000 for 2022 are now due. Payments can be made at the office or online. Thank you very much. We continue to respond with prayer to the challenges of this special time. A practitioner is available to pray with you immediately following our service every Sunday. On duty this Sunday is Reverend Anne Shand, and the number to call is 876-289-0900. You may also speak with a minister from Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 12 midnight by calling 876-289-0907. And if you feel moved to support our ministry, kindly visit our donate page. That's donate.templeoflightcsl.org and you'll find all our banking details. Thank you for your generosity and for helping us to be a beacon of light in the world. This concludes our announcements for today, and this is a gentle reminder that there is to be no gathering following the service. So don't hang around soon as, we're not running you, but <laughs> when the service is over, you need to leave as quickly as possible. <laughs> Thank you so much. That concludes the announcements. And now for our first hymn, Open My Eyes. Please stand. Open my eyes that I may see glimpses of truth. 
Please be seated, and please help me to welcome our speaker this morning, practitioner Jennifer Livingston, who will be bringing you the warm truth to open your heart, open your mind, and just have you feeling good when you leave here today. Please help me welcome Jennifer Livingston. Thank you, Carol, and good morning, friends. <laughs> Let me also add my own words of welcome to all of you and to those of you tuned into this service on the World Wide Web. I want to say what a privilege it is for me this morning to be sharing with you in the capacity of speaker on this first Practitioner Sunday for 2022 and I want to thank Carol again for setting the stage for the, this morning's service. Friends, looking back on my decision to undertake the course of study to become a licensed practitioner was not a simple one because I had completed the first and second year Science of Mind courses and had intended to be a participant in the third year classes that were being conducted back then by our founding minister, Dr. Elmer Lumsden. But the demands of traveling for work did not allow me this opportunity. I then found myself in a situation where there were now not enough persons who had completed first and second year studies to make a third year class, and so I had to do, as we would say in school, sit out a year. 
However, when you have made a decision and the choice to pursue a particular course of action, then everything in the universe conspires to bring about your desire. It doesn't matter what obstacles or delay that may seem to get in the way, it is in this certainty as I stand here this morning that I have titled my talk, Living a Life of Choice. And so, what exactly do I mean by living a life of choice? Can we live any other way? And are we not making choices every moment of every day? Indeed, we are. And as Dr. Ernest Holmes, founder of this teaching called The Science of Mind and Spirit, states in our textbook, and which was the epi epigraph of the inspirational reading, he says, we cannot live a choiceless life. Every day, every moment, every second, there is choice. If it were not so, we would not be individuals. End of that quote. And friends, it is in this, our individuality, that Dr. Holmes reminds us also. We are individuals, and the only way we can be individuals is to be spontaneous. End quote. Of course, along with this spontaneity comes the privilege or right that allows us to make decisions. But there can be no choice unless there is something from which to choose. And in addition, not only must there be the possibility of choosing, but there must also be the ability to experience that which is chosen. In other words, not only do we make choices, but every choice we make results in our experiencing same. What an awesome responsibility then that we have as we go through our day choosing what it is that we will experience, but also being wise in making our decisions and choices. The story is told of a crowded airplane about to take off when the silence is shattered by a five-year-old boy who picks that moment to throw a wild temper tantrum. I'm sure many of you can relate. No matter what the frustrated, embarrassed mother did to try to calm him down, the boy continues to scream furiously and kick the seats around him. Suddenly, from the rear of the plane, an elderly gentleman in the uniform of an Air Force general comes forward and stops the flustered mother with an upraised hand. He then leans down, motions towards his chest, and whispers something to the little boy's ear. Instantly, the boy calms down gently takes his mother's hand and quietly fastens his seatbelt. All the other passengers burst into spontaneous applause. As the general returns to his seat, a flight attendant touches his arm and says, excuse me, general, but could I ask you what magic words you used on that little boy? The old man smiles serenely and gently confides. I showed him my pilot's wings, service stars, and battle ribbons, and explained that they entitled me to throw one passenger out the plane door on any flight I choose. That's exercising a personal choice, for which the Dictionary of New Thought terms gives the following definition. Personal choice is divine freedom. Without choice, there would be no spontaneous volition. And without the possibility of more than one experience to choose, there would be no choice. For many of us, we often take this task lightly, especially in our routine activities but even in our most mundane tasks, we need to remind ourselves 
that we are choosing to honor the Christ's presence within. Thus, we can choose to redirect our path using our inner power to create a greater experience. From the Science of Mind textbook, Dr. Holmes also states, man has the ability to choose what he will do with his life and is unified with the law which automatically produces his choices, end quote. Friends, we are always utilizing this law. It is the law of cause and effect for some purpose, and most times we are doing it unconsciously. When Jesus, the master teacher, said that we should believe even before we receive, he was explaining the operation of this mental law of cause and effect. If nothing is believed in, then nothing is acted upon by it. But since we are always believing something, the law will always be operating upon what we believe in the way we believe it. Consequently, we must learn to bring our thoughts in line with the original harmony, the divine presence, knowing that the necessity of choosing is determined by the very nature of our being and we cannot avoid it. So let us say this affirmation together. I will read it once and you can say it after me. I'll break it down. It says, I honor the Christ's presence within me by being fully present to the choices I make each moment. And so I'll repeat it in parts. I honor the Christ's presence within me, together, presence within me, by being fully present, being present to the choices I make each moment. And my friends, that is the truth. We need to be fully present because being present to our choices in the now is being underscored by an article by Dr. Carol Carnes from her Living Consciously articles. Um, and she pointed to this fact that we only have now moments. And she says that spending time thinking about our previous choices or spending too much time thinking about the outcomes in the future of choices we are about to make robs us of our now moments. Dr. Carnes gave us a vivid reminder in that article, and she states, and I quote, now is what the clock is reporting no matter what time it may be. So we're always making choices in the now. Friends, even in our spiritual activities, such as our meditation, our spiritual mind healing treatment, or our affirmative prayers, even reading inspirational literature, these are all choices that we make as to how we move forward on this spiritual path. We can choose to be diligent with our practice and the study of truth, being fully confident that the law will bring about the desired result in our experience. Or we can choose not to do the spiritual work and live with the consequences of whatever comes our way. However, my friends, this act of choosing, therefore, is very important. As we are reminded in the book of Joshua, when he was addressing the tribes of Israel in chapter 24, verse 15, the King James Version states, and if it seems evil for you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve. And the New International Version, it states, but if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. End of that scripture. So if we have to make a choice and we feel we don't know what to do, we need to become still, quiet our minds, and know that the Father within knows what to do and how to do it. This guidance works for us no matter where we are in the world or what religion we practice. Dr. Raymond Charles Barker, in his book, The Power of Decisions, states the following. 
decision is the most important function of the individual mind. No creative process can begin until a decision is made. Dr. Barker goes on to state, to say you do not know what to do or you do not know what you want is to negate the infinite intelligence which is individualized in you. No one else on earth is better equipped to determine your good than you are. The universe has no favorites and God knows no special person." End quote. So, as self-choosing individuals, we live and move and have our being in that one mind, the mind of God, which is the creative mind of the universe. It flows through man, and it can only return to us what we think into it. No matter what we do, law will always manifest our desires. So if we're thinking of ourselves as lacking in any way, or as being poor and needy, then mind has no choice but to return to us what we have thought into it. Thoughts are things and they have the power to express themselves in our experience. Therefore, we must choose well. And as this article by Ralph Marston states, in one of the Daily Motivator series that is sent to me by my husband, Carl, every morning, I would like to share this article with you. It says, choose well, by Ralph Marston. What are you choosing right now? What will it add to or take away from your life? The circumstances of your world do not just appear out of thin air. Many of them come from intentional or habitual choices. And a larger portion of those choices are yours. Some choices provide quick, trivial, pleasurable benefits at the expense of significant costs that comes later. The problem with those choices is that later does eventually come. Other choices impose burdens on you initially. Yet, as you continue to willingly shoulder the burdens, these choices result in greater enduring value. Any given moment offers countless options, with each one leading to even more options. Your ability to choose among these options provides immense opportunity. Take that opportunity seriously, thoughtfully, and choose well. The quality of your life depends on your choices. End of that article. So my friends, let us challenge ourselves. As Reverend John always says, he gives you an assignment. Well, my assignment for you this week. If we say we are choosing to be more loving, then let us practice being loving. So if we go out tomorrow morning or later today, and for some reason we experience a bad experience in the traffic, perhaps maybe one of our famous drivers or taxi drivers, bad drives us, then if we're choosing love, we cannot be berating the drivers. We need to send them some love and send them on their way. And if we are choosing to be peaceful, for example, then we cannot get upset and angry because the young man at the stoplight cleaned the windscreen despite our telling him not to. We are choosing to be peaceful. And my friends, importantly, if you're on our spiritual prosperity adventure, or if you're just choosing abundance and to be more prosperous as you walk into a store and you see something, we don't want you to immediately have as your first thought, I cannot afford it. That negates your power of choice in the moment. So, my friends, when we are living 
a life of choice. Here are three things we must remember. Our power is in the moment. We have to make the decision. Secondly, we must be consistently watching our thoughts and our words. Since thirdly, the creative process will always outpicture our dominant thought patterns and oftentimes even without us making a decision. Friends, one of the most important things for us to remember is that we are always causing something to be created for us. So if today you have a choice to make, maybe a change in careers, a change in a relationship, or a change of residence, or perhaps you want to pursue a new business opportunity, remember, life responds to us in the way that we approach it. So in every choice, at every moment, it must be a God-centered choice. Let us then, during this week and going forward in this new year, choose to be identified with power, with love, with beauty, with peace, and with joy in the knowing that we are always living a life of choice. Namaste. Let's give her another round of applause. Didn't I tell you? Warm words of wisdom. Thank you so much, Jennifer. We now have, okay, a musical item from Tony. Thank you, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I've never heard that song before. It's beautiful. <laughs> and now it's time for us to do the Prayer of Jamaica and our second hymn. Jennifer? Prayer of Jamaica. The radiant light of God's love is now flowing through us and from us to everything and everyone it touches. The eternal light of God's love now completely fills, covers, and surrounds our island Jamaica. The glowing intensity of the light of God's love now interpenetrates and awakens within the hearts and minds of our countrymen and women the truths of life which set free. The light of God's love is growing and glowing in intensity in the hearts and minds of mankind everywhere. Love, health, harmony, goodwill, peace, uprightness, integrity, joy, prosperity, kindness, and our oneness under God are now established. And so it is. And now for our second hymn, which is found on page three, I'm Choosing Heaven Today. Music and lyrics by Ricky Byers Beckwith. Friends, please take our love offering blessings in your hands. And if you're about to hit the donate page, um, button on the donate page, please place your hand over your heart and repeat, repeat the blessing with me. That's on screen. Lovingly, Lovingly I, I give, give, joyfully I receive. Be thou fruitful, fruitful increase, increase, and multiply. Bless, prosper, prosper and, and enrich. enrich. Everyone whom you touch and replenish all of my financial affairs. So be it. Thank you, Father. And so it is. So please join me in the closing affirmative prayer. And in this knowing that there is only one, one presence, one power, that which is God operating in through and as each one of us, that which has conducted which this which we call a Sunday morning service. We give thanks for each person that has participated 
within the walls of the sanctuary and online with us this morning. I know that we each had a choice to be present at this morning's service, and we chose to be here. So we give thanks for this coming together, knowing that as we go forward in this week, we are mindful of the choices that we make in our daily lives. I am knowing for each one of us that it is a week filled with love and joy and peace and harmony. So as we go from this place, we take this consciousness with us and we give thanks for each other and we give thanks for the shared experience as I release this word to law, knowing that all this is already so. And so, so it, it is. is. And please join me in the peace song, Yes. <laughs> There is peace on earth. to join us tomorrow morning, Reverend John Scott, for quiet moments in the garden. And on Tuesday, with practitioner Sandra Cooper at our spiritual mind healing service. And also this Thursday, prayer power will be at 5 p.m. because at 6, we are asking you to join us for our Lifeline series. And this week, our very special guest, is Dr. Edward Villune, our spiritual leader. So please be here on Thursday. His theme is New Year's resolutions at 6 p.m. on Facebook Live. And of course, next Sunday morning, please join us for a very special Youth Sunday. I thank you for being here. Have a great week.